All right, guys. So Dalila. Hello, good morning. Long, long time no see, Dalila. How are you been? I'm good, thank you. Good morning to everyone. Valeria, good morning. How are you today? Good. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> good to see you. Renz, good morning. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. All right, beautiful. All right, cool. Good morning. Sorry for being late. No, 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 no. We're just starting. We're just starting. So, you guys, just in time, we are starting a new unit, and this unit is called Promote Innovation. All right. So, that's the unit that you need to look for. Mm -hmm. One of the most important classes, one of the most important classes of the whole program. All right. That's why. That's why I don't want anyone to miss this class. It's, it's, the, it's the core. This class and customer service, the one that we did before, remember, are critical in the certificate form. So, and, and, you, and you may wonder why, you know, why this is important. Man, because without innovation, there is no way for you to move forward. So what the education industry or the education system in Australia is trying to do is getting getting people across innovation in an early stage of their careers in an early stage not at the at the end you see because a, a lot of people start learning about innovation in a master degree it doesn't make any sense to do a master degree in innovation you should start you should start your business career with innovation i mean you need to understand that because if you don't if you don't give value to this class in terms of what innovation is you will miss the train you will miss the train and i don't want you to miss the train because i like you because you're my students and because i care about you guys pay attention to this ibm search for it because this is something that you need to know in the business world because that was the pioneer in computers in hardware all right, working for IBM for the for the average American in in 1980s was the dream. Was the dream, just like working today for Apple or working today for Google. That is the dream for an average American. Why? Because of the working conditions, because of the payment scales, and because of the reputation that you will have in your CV if you have that company in, in your work experience. So IBM was huge American computers company. There was a similar company that was called Oracle, but that company was in the software, in the software component of, 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 of the informatic or the information technologies. Hmm? And that was the company number one in terms of software to manage businesses. Again, that was the company number one in terms of softwares, managing businesses. And they lost the position of leadership because they were not innovative enough, because they forgot about disruptive innovation. And another company came and ate their life. And that company, that company is called Salesforce. Anybody has heard about that company, Salesforce, yeah? Guys, right, Salesforce, anyone? Guys, just say yes or no, you know, say yes, no, right now. No. Thank you. No, Sandy, no. All right, I put that, I am, I am writing down that in the chat. Salesforce, you will know about this company anyway. You will know, because this company is going to be like Microsoft. You know what Microsoft is? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, the same yes. thing. Salesforce is a company that you will know because it's becoming, it's becoming the Microsoft for businesses. All right, because that is how you manage a business, guys. You will be working with Salesforce sooner or later, or with a competitor of Salesforce, which is this company, HubSpot. All right, this company, both of them, they did disruptive innovation. Guys, they did disruptive innovation. 
and they converted something that was extremely expensive. Oracle was extremely expensive. To have Oracle in your company was crazy. We're talking about millions of dollars for you to establish an Oracle uh, workflow in a large corporation. Millions. The first time I worked with Oracle was in 19, I don't know, it was, it was in 2002, so about 20 years ago, 2002. And I was working for a large superannuation company, $2 million was the cost to establish the operation of Oracle in this company, two million. And three years ago, I did the same work for a company here in Australia to establish the software for them to be able to manage the company in the cloud digitally. And the cost was $35,000. So imagine something that was $2 million to $35,000. That is disruptive innovation because they create a product that was similar to the old product, but more efficient, faster, in modules. So it's modular, $35,000. Obviously, all companies now, they have in Salesforce or HubSpot as the software to manage their businesses, their sales, their marketing. Rexan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. What is the problem with the managers when it comes to innovation? Listen, this is a kind of question that everybody should be able to answer now. So mm -hmm. do, do a self-assessment right now and think, can I answer this question? Yes or no, all right? Because this is critical because you will be running or working in a business. So. What is the problem with management when it comes to innovation, Roxanne? What do you know about this? Um, okay, so the, um, I mean, the manager is the, are those are managers, they are in the middle. So they're the ones who lead the staff. And when the staff would, uh, would go to the manager and and suggest how suggest some innovation. They're usually the ones who stop those stuff since, especially if it would cost them too much. If there would there's more workload. All right, the first part of your explanation, perfect, perfect. The second one, no because that's not the reason. That's not the reason why they stop innovation. They don't stop innovation because they say it is expensive. Because actually, hello, innovation nowadays is very cheap. So that's actually the opposite, okay, Rexanne? But the first part was spot on. Can you repeat the first part, please? Um, they are the ones in the middle, so they're the ones who lead and guide those stuff, those in the bottom of the work. Why, Rexan, why people at the bottom, why, why they know more? Why, why they know how to innovate more? Why, why, why they have more um, ideas when it comes to innovation? What is the reason? Um, because they they are the the ones who usually uh, work more. They're the ones who um, give effort more to the to their works. And also because who knows what? Yeah, good one. What else, guys? Who knows? Who knows why? Why? Why people that is at the bottom of the pyramid in the infrastructure? Why they know more? Why? Friends, go. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Um, because I think, uh, because uh, they are the one who are more exposed and, and exposed to the operations of the business. That's it. Wow, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. 
Chlorhexan, well done too. The first part that you mentioned, spot on. Middle managers, you know, they stop people at the bottom when it comes to innovation. Yes, yes, that's true. But the reason, the reason why they stop them is not because innovation is expensive, no. It's not because it is expensive. It is because innovation could simplify the business operation. Pay attention to this so you learn. Innovation simplifies a business operation. If innovation does not simplify business operation, then it's not innovation, it's bullshit. Hmm? So if you say to your head, to your boss, I want to simplify the operations of our department, what will happen? Tell me what will happen, Ronaldo? It will it will be the team, it will be large or it will be a smaller if we are simplifying operations. What will happen, Ronaldo? Can you repeat because I heard just the, the last three, the last sentence? All right. Cool. So if okay, if um somebody at the bottom, staff, they say to, to the boss, let's do this innovation thing. You know, that will simplify how we do things. What will happen with the team at that department, the people? It will be smaller the team or it will be larger? Mm. I, th I think uh, la larger team Large well, team, right. because I think more people to to think about something. Uh, it's better to to uh, to re find the result, you know, because innovation is not so so simple. You, you have to study a lot uh, because I think. Pro it's necessary a lot of people to to you hear something nobody sorry to stop you but i need to stop you now no other people don't hear what you're saying that's not that's not true innovation is simple actually the opposite if innovation is not making things simpler then it's not innovation can i say something yes uh, you said that innovation is making things more simple. That's it. Yeah. Ronaldo just said another thing. It's He said that innovation is not simple, easy to find. It's another thing. This, I think this is another thing. Ah, all right. So that was... That yeah. was all right. Yeah. So, it's another thing yeah, that Ronaldo said. Oh, thank you for so, that. Thank you very much. That's what you mean, Ronaldo. It's difficult to find. Yes, yes. Ah, all right. So why why you need more people then? Why why the team will be larger? The, right. For for that reason, because more people can when you work with more people, you can heard a lot of ideas, you know. And between these ideas, I mean, among these ideas, you can you can find more results, you know, more. Uh -huh. Let's let let's clarify this. No, no, look, let's clarify this, guys. For, and that's why last class I explained this to you in really in, in, in detail. It sounds like you are it sounds like you are right, and people will tell you, yes, you're right, but but in, in fact you're not. And with all respect, guys, with all respect, I'm just going to try to explain this to you again so you get it. Guys, don't get offended any day. Don't get offended any day, please. When I tell you things are wrong. I'm your teacher, I need to tell you this. I am, an, an, I, I am an old style teacher. You know, the one that tells you, yeah, the way. You know, more than teachers, they say yes to everyone. And, and nobody learns. That's not, that's not the point. So don't, 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 don't take it personally.
personally. Don't, don't take it personal. That's not the point. The point is that we all learn. All right? So have a look, have a look at, this, at, at, this, at this, at this very situation. The people that really, that, really, that really care about the business is the people at the top, the directors, the owners. Think about it. Why, why the director or the people at the board or the owners, why they are the people that really, really care? Because people at, at the middle, they don't care. People at the bottom, they don't care. Believe me, they don't care. Somebody offered them a better job, close to home, with a higher payment, and the next day they will go. That's how it is, and that's how it should be. That's how it should be. We humans, we're free. We are not the slaves of companies. So if somebody offers me a better job close to my house with a higher payment, you as a staff member, I as a staff member, what you will say? Thank you. Going to a different place now. Of course. So as an staff, that's why you are that, that's why a lot of people call employees staff, because you are but you are staff. Staff could be replaceable, man. This is pragmatic business work. You know? If you do not do pragmatic business um, analysis, you will be saying, oh, people care about the business. Not everyone. So managers, they also don't care about the business. They care about the paycheck. They care about the department they have, that little country that they have. So the, 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 the department lasts forever. <clears throat> you, know, I, you know, IT departments, for example, do you think they care about the business? Little. They care about their business, about their activity, which is protecting the business technology. No more. They don't care about the customers. They don't care about the sales. They don't care about marketing. They don't care about human resources. They don't care about logistics. They care about the computers and the software to be safe and secure. And guys, the people that care about a business are the owners. The, you know, think about, think about Constas at the school. That is the guy who cares about the original campus. That is the guy who is working late at night, regardless if he's getting paid or not. That is the guy who is worried about the coronavirus situation and what will happen in 2021 if, if, if uh, the, the, the borders are not open. He's, that is the guy who cares about the business. Not everybody cares about the business. People at the top care, and that's why they get paid more. Because they're accountable. If something wrong happens, they go, they, they have problems too. So it's, let, let's start with that. Now, pay attention to the second part of this. Innovation only has a place in our minds if what you are doing is going to simplify the process as a result, the cost of manufacturing, the cost of production, the cost of research is minimized. Is optimize it. As a result of that optimization, you can offer that product to a better price, with a better tax price to the consumers. And consumers will say to you, thank you. Thank you, company. Because of you, now I can afford this. 10 years ago, I couldn't afford this. Guys, do you know how expensive it was a computer in 1980? I mean, a, co a computer in 1980 was only something for governments and armies. And that's it. Because they were millions of dollars and they were the size of my room. Nowadays, you can get a computer for five hundred dollars.
nowadays, nowadays. And everybody has a computer. Why? Because these companies have been innovating to the point that we have today a computer that is much smaller, much simpler to a computer 20 or 30 years ago. Is that true or false? Tell me, true or false? It's true, it's true. 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 So that doesn't change in any industry. If innovation is not simplifying what you're doing, it's not innovation. It's bullshit. So that's why I'm telling you, this is how you make a life in this new world. As an entrepreneur, as a business person, I don't care if you're a hairdresser. I don't care if you are an exotic dancer. I don't care if you are a gardener. I don't care if you are a preach. I don't care if you are a politician. I don't care who you are in terms of what you do. But what I do care is that if you want to do something about it in terms of money, in terms of making an income, so you don't have to work 40 years for somebody else, then you need to do something that will be simplified what was established before. And that will give you, as a result, a company that will change the world. And that is truly the essence of innovation. How to make the world a better place to what it was before. It's a very important call. That's why I care about this class. It's one of the most important classes of this program. It's the class that I need you to go to, to get. Imagine that you don't came to the financial uh, budget management classes. I don't care. Because that is something that you will learn any day. But innovation, you need to learn it from, from moment zero. So when you have innovation, the teams will become smaller because you have processes that are much more simpler, less steps to do something. Guys, have you, have you been in a call or Woolworths lately? Have you seen how people pay for the items? What people do? Tell me. There's no like employee to help you with the stuff. Is that what you mean? It's the, the, the machines? The machines. Yeah, they don't have to pay. Yeah. So, they don't have to pay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yes, Consta. So, so the, 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 the staff, the team is much, 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 much more smaller. To the point of efficiency, to the point of efficiency. However, you know, 20 years ago, not, not 20, 10 years ago, all supermarkets, they have a cashier in every single, every two, three meters. One. Nowadays, don't. They don't. Why? Because people can do the process themselves. So <coughs> that is what innovation is. It's about customer service. Can you do the customer service yourself? Yes or no? If the answer is no, you need to innovate. Customer service is not shaking hands. That's not customer service. Or smiling. That's not customer service. Eh? That's not cost because people, oh, customer services. Hello, customer. How are you today? Long time no see. Oh, and your kids, how are they? Long time no see. That is not customer service. That is bullshit. Because in reality, the person that is telling you that, they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. So what you should care, you should care, is how efficiently can you do things? And if the company is allowing you to do that, that is customer service then. That is customer service then. Look, this guy, Richard Brands. 
This is the guy who knows about these two things that I'm telling you, customer service and innovation. What is the company that he founded? Who knows? Virgin. Yes. What was the what what was the first thing that he told with Virgin? Again, again. What was the first product that he sold? Uh, uh, soft drinks, I guess. Yes. Sodas. Yes. And then CDs, and then videos, and then music. Yeah. And then financial services, and then gyms. And one day, listen, one day he thought, these, these, these airlines, <laughs> these airlines, they are shit. These large American airlines, they are really bad. And they tell people that they are great in customer service because, you know, they give them food in the plane and they give them a beer and no. I'm going to do something different. So he cut all the crap and he gave people what they needed, which is efficiency in terms of you moving from A to B quickly. And that's why if you go to Virgin, you know, you don't need to do many, many steps because it is expected that you are just wearing or carrying a simple bag. And that's why in Virgin, for example, if you are in the airplane, you don't get food. Because to be honest, my, you are not in an airplane to eat. If you want to eat, you go to McDonald's, all right? Or you go to Hungry Jack's, or you go to one of these Domino's Pizza in the airport. It's going to cost you much less money. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't travel from Melbourne to Sydney to eat. You don't do that. You travel from Melbourne to Sydney because you have a meeting in Sydney. That's why you travel. And Virgin understood that. And you know what they say? No more food. No more food. And people were, oh, okay, no more food. All right, okay, cool, why? Uh, because we are going to simplify our business process so we get rid of that, which is really, really consuming in terms of energy, people, processes. And we are going to use all that energy in order to improve what really matters here, which is how to take you from point A to point B. And what happens? As a result of that, the prices of A tickets, they went down by 30% and people went to version. And this company, poof, global company like this because of that nobody did it before that is customer service that is innovation you need to simplify your processes and now you know somebody will say oh but what about the people they're losing their jobs you know we should care about them no that's not how this thing works if you care about them let them know that they need to upskill quickly because this particular occupation is about to disappear. Tell them. Tell them. If you want to help them, tell them. But if you go, no, I need to protect people, that is very important because, no, that's not how you protect people. The market will go the way the market goes. Nobody can stop a market. Nobody can stop a market. You need to understand that, not a politician, not a, not a prime minister, nobody. The market is uncontrollable. It's a natural thing, it's a human thing. You cannot control that sort of things. You know, if you want to smoke a cigarette, you go and find a cigarette. If you want to have scotch, a whiskey, you go and find the whiskey. It was forbidden. In Chicago, for example, in USA, in 1940s, it was illegal to buy whiskey. Illegal to buy whiskey. Now you buy whiskey everywhere. But in USA, in the 1940s, up to the 1955s, illegal. 
And what happened? Mafia. Somebody say, who cares about that? I'm going to sell the bloody whiskey. I'm going to put the price four times up though. And people who wanted to buy the whiskey, they bought the whiskey. When, when you want something, you get it. The market is not controllable. So if you know that, that your father is a taxi driver, or you want to do a taxi company, man, don't do that. <laughs> you know, people is not paying for taxis. People is paying for Uber. Oh, but I am sorry about the taxi drivers. No, they need to move. It's the fault of the companies that didn't tell them this Uber company is coming and they were going to eat our lunch. We better change now. You know, like Australia, for example, has a very, very, very small government. The country I came from, Colombia, has 20 times, 20 times the size of the government of Australia. Guys, anybody from Colombia here? No, I'm from Mexico. <laughs> well, your case should be very similar to mine, though. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Especially with Lopez Abrador. Mm. A lot of people in the government. Huge governments. Huge governments. Yeah. With a lot of people, with a lot of departments, with a lot of employees, a lot of people is in the public sector. And what happens? Innovation stops. Why innovation stops? Because they don't want to lose the jobs. So the reason, listen up, the reason a manager will stop you majority of times is because if you promote that innovation, the team will become smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually it may disappear. And the manager does not want the team to disappear, the department to disappear because that is how he get money. So the manager, if he sees that your innovation is going to replace three or four people in the department, the manager will say, um, probably not. Because what about if the next innovation will replace me? So you need to be aware of it, that's all. You don't need to do anything about it because it may not happen to you, but you need to be aware of it. So you get to find around it, all right? Innovation is exciting. It's what takes people forward. It's what moves societies forward. If we stop innovating, we die. If we stop innovating, we die. If we don't find a way to get rid of fuels to power our cars, for example. If we don't find a way to replace traditional electricity from the grid, if we don't find a way to stop using coal, we are going to end in a very bad situation on planet Earth. However, there is some very smart people that are finding new ways for you to have electricity at home. Very, very smart people. I love that people. That, those, are, uh, those are our angels. They are our heroes. You know, the real life heroes like Superman, Batman is the people that are innovating to the point that, for example, some cars, some cars in the street, nowadays, right now, some cars don't use fuel. Some cars right now, as I speak, don't use fuel. What they use? Electricity. Which company? Um, tell, no, no. no. <laughs> it's not Telestra. <laughs> Um, Tesla. 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 <laughs> well done, Bali. Right now, some people have Tesla cars out there, and those cars, they don't contaminate. They still do. But as, as, as they advance, they will be less and less and less polluting in terms of the materials, the batteries, and many other things. But in terms of CO2, they are not contaminating anymore. Now, they are expensive cars though. But as 
the efficiency of the production plant increases. Guys, as the efficiency of the production plant increases, what will happen with the cost of the Tesla? Will it go down or up? Down. No. 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 Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Like the computer you said about yes, everything else. Have a look at the solar panels. Now it's a, a little bit more affordable. 50% more affordable compared to 2005, according yeah. to I did, I did a lot of work in this area because I was the consultant of a medium-sized electricity company in Australia. Yes. And it's 50% compared to 2005. So in 2005, a solar panel was about, you know, $1,000 per solar panel. Nowadays, it's about 500 bucks. Install, operating, and everything else. That is a really big change compared to 15 years ago. And as we move forward, the solar panel will be $100. $100. I'm pretty sure. So everybody will install it. <laughs> because it's affordable. You know, guys, I need you to understand business. I need you to understand business so you don't make silly mistakes. I did the mistakes for you already. Well, a lot of people did a lot of mistakes and I noticed it and I took note. So that's what I tell my students so they don't fall down. Hmm? The reason people will move to electric cars, the reason people will move to a renewable energy like solar panels is not because they love Greta Thunberg or because they are greenies. Mm -hmm. It's not because of that, that's bullshit. You know, my neighbor, She's all the time, oh, we all should move to, an, to, to renewable energy because we need to love our planet and we need to hug our trees. Bullshit! <laughs> that's, why, that's not the reason why you move to, to renewable energy. The reason you move to renewable energy is because it becomes accessible to you so then you can buy it. If you can buy it, you use it because obviously it's better. Obviously. But if you cannot afford it, that's why I criticize a lot of people that say, let's change the world, let's change the world. Let's tell all these companies to stop innovation, to stop capitalism, to stop creation, to stop production, let's change the world. And I am going, so how are you going to change them? Because these are the companies that are producing the new technologies that will take us out of this problem. Yes, for me, it's a confusion in their, no, in their knowledge because they think we, if we stop to innovation, we are more contaminating, but it's the opposite. If we put all, all of all our power and all of knowledge in the invention that is now, it could be better in the future because we can find a new ways like, for example, the cars in electricity, but for example, in this case, a lot of companies of cars doesn't doesn't want, don't want to be like Tesla because they are going to lose a lot of money. And yes, a part in the in the market. So really good point, Vale. You are you are very connected today. I really like that. That happens to Ford, and mm -hmm. that happens to, to Ford in the 1970s and 80s against against Toyota. Yes, Ford was doing these big cars, you know, the big trucks for the American market, the rednecks, big trucks. And Toyota was doing this little Corolla car. And, and, and Ford was like, no, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to do that because if I do that, I'm going to lose all the money that I have in terms of production machinery to produce these big trucks. So I'm not going to do exactly what you say. And they didn't do it. And then Toyota was below Ford it becomes the company number one in the world because of the small cars. Amazing, amazing what could happen with innovation. I'm going to tell you something. A lot, a lot of people criticize China. And I know, and I know how difficult it is at many levels. I know. At political level, there are many things that I don't lie about. I live in, I'm telling you because I live in China. I live with my family. It's not, I live there. And I live there in three cities, so I can I really can talk to you about China. 
And what I can tell you is the following, they destroyed, they destroyed the, the environment in order to, or, or for the sake of economical growth. Yeah, and in doing so, in destroying the environment, the rivers, you know, the, the, the lands, the resources, in doing so, they leave people out of poverty. Because I live there, I can tell you, man, people don't, people eat in China. Even if you are super poor, you still eat. And you have your phone and you have, and you have transport, you have your, mo your little motorbike, you have a life. And you know what happens? Or what, what is the reason? It's because they thought, all right, let's just create work and companies and, and production. And yes, we're going to be destroying resources. But you know what is happening today? And remember me for this. A lot of people criticizes China. Oh, it's the most contaminated place in the world. It's going to become the cleanest. It's going to become the cleanest. Why? Because with all that amount of money that they have now, and with, with the capability to innovate, they are going to clean all that mess. They are going to claim back what it was before because of the resources that now they have, which is know-how. You know, like you will in Taiwan, is the buses in Taiwan, they are all electric now. Electric. All the bus here in Melbourne, have a look at the buses here. China is ahead compared to Australia in public transport when it comes to protecting the environment, like fly away. And people, oh, you see the difference? It's because they are really into innovation. This is our ticket to salvation. Innovation. This is what, anybody saw the movie Black Panther? No. I haven't, I haven't. Oh, man. Watch it. The, uh, the Black Panther, they have this city that is called Wakanda. And this city, Wakanda, is so advanced. It's so advanced that everything is super clean and everything works well. That's what will happen in the world if we allow people to continue innovating. If we allow people to, to, to be entrepreneurs, to be responsible for their own professional lives. If we stop people from doing that, then we'll, we will be in a chaotic situation. So, yeah. All right, guys, so that was the conversation for today. Hopefully you get it because probably will be the last time that we really talk seriously about it. You are the salvation, I am the salvation. We need to find out new ways, new ways to do businesses, 